Hello, the title of this, this video blog is The Art of the Deal, uh, the same title as uh, Donald Trump's uh, famous book, or rather a famous book about Donald Trump's uh, dealing. Uh, however, you'll be disappointed to know I'm not going to talk uh, about Donald Trump. I want to talk instead uh, about two uh, deals that have been gripping the markets. The first is, is Brexit. Uh, now, it, Brexit appears uh, was not a, a nightmare, a bad dream all along. It is going to be launched. Uh, Theresa May, in the run-up uh, to this week's Tory party conference, uh, looks like she will trigger Article 50 around about uh, the end of March uh, next year, perhaps uh, just on uh, St. Patrick's Day. Um, and I think what's interesting about this from a game theoretic point of view uh, is that the strategy of Mrs. May is beginning now to become a little bit more clear. Uh, I think, first of all, uh, from a game theoretic point of view, again, she has to sound tough, uh, not just for her European adversaries, but also to please uh, the many Eurosceptics uh, in the Tory party, uh, again, importantly, ahead of the, <clears throat> the, the Tory party conference. Uh, and a lot of the rhetoric uh, coming out of the UK this week uh, has been pretty tough. Uh, for example, favouring British workers uh, over foreign workers, threats to, to leave the, uh, the single market. Uh, from an investment point of view, this has all had a pretty big effect uh, on sterling. Remember that just three or four weeks ago, uh, sterling dollar was up in the one, uh, the mid 130s, uh, and this week we came right down into uh, to 127 relative to the dollar. We've been underweight sterling, and we think sterling really is the barometer uh, of the the market's assessment uh, of Brexit risk. However, it's come right down now towards our target of 125. So simply from a risk management. Uh, point of view, we now we now close off uh, that position uh, and we're neutral sterling. There are big short positions in the market, so actually it could uh, it could bounce back. In terms of the background to Brexit, uh, again a lot of the uh, the macro data in the UK, I have to say, has been better than expected. It hasn't been the catastrophe uh, many people expected uh, just yet. That's been, of course, uh, I think cushioned by sterling, cushioned by the uh, the Bank of England. Um, but I suspect that when we get to next March, uh, an uncertainty becomes real for a lot of UK companies and their European counterparts, uh, then the data may begin uh, to look actually quite, uh, quite different. So we watch this very, very closely. Um, I am um, uh, cognizant of the fact that many of the pure domestic plays in the UK uh, have not fared as well as uh, export-oriented UK stocks. Uh, and maybe that's a sign of, of things to come. The second deal I want to talk about uh, is the agreement uh, between OPEC and oil producing countries uh, to limit production. Uh, and here there's even maybe less clarity than Brexit. Um, and we, we had this thing, we had the agreement uh, in Algeria last week, it took the market by surprise. Um, my own view is that countries at the epicenter of the deal, Saudi Arabia, are under very, very strong uh, financial pressure. And again, that can go uh, a number of ways. That can lead them to produce and want to produce more oil, or maybe in a sense of desperation, it can actually lead them to cooperate uh, with the likes of, uh, of Iran. Uh, the, the, the details of the deal, uh, how many barrels are going to be caught, uh, when and by whom, are not yet clear. So we have to wait uh, till the end of November to get that. Uh, however, uh, our own view in energy has been uh, overweight since August. We, we, we got into oil uh, in the low 40s. It's now on the high uh, 40s and energy companies uh, now finally beginning to uh, to benefit from that. Uh, so I think that's a, a, a notable trade uh, that, that's beginning to, to go our way. Finally, a couple of words about Donald Trump. Uh, we have the second um, the, the second uh, debate in the presidential election coming up in four or five days. Uh, there's a sense that maybe uh, he's a little, he, he's behind in terms of the momentum from the first debate. So again, it's going to be interesting uh, as to how he addresses this. Uh, will he change uh, his stance? Uh, maybe appear less uh, irritable. Maybe address some of his taxation issues up front. Uh, if he does that, uh, then I think that 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 makes for a, a close uh, race uh, and perhaps uh, a heightened market volatility as we go through October, which tends to be the most volatile 
uh, market historically. So we all uh, watch the, uh, the next presidential debate with interest. Thank you.